and Security Committee. Uh, good to have you here. Good morning. Good to be here. I, uh, uh, first of all, I didn't realize the Palestinians had that so much firepower. They didn't seem, seems like they've really amped up in three years. Well, this has been a remarkable escalation, not only in the amount of rockets. I mean, we've had more than 800, which is mm -hmm. as much as the last time that there was a full incursion into Gaza. In addition, it is the, uh, the reach of the rockets. For the mm -hmm. first time now, there's been three that have been detonated over Tel Aviv, and this Iron Dome system has actually prevented uh, likely some more destruction in Israel, and that's sort of shielding the real impact of, of this onslaught. I know, my, my God, it, over 800 rockets, if it, all it had been hit, can you imagine this? But their defense has been pretty darn good. You know what, too, I was reading uh, some accounts this morning, and I'm reading story after story after story of individual families where two babies were killed, a mother over their babies, or a dad runs out to save the community when he hears the warning strikes, and then this happens. To me, we keep saying, you know, 100 people died, 1,000 people died, died, but when you realize these stories, you know, how bad it really is with these kids that are dying, you know, well, babies. But oftentimes what's happening is these these launch sites are being placed in the middle of um, neighborhoods exactly. and they're being put next to places yeah. in which they use the citizens as shields. Now, they've been very, very strategic in their attempts and, you know, the there hasn't been an invasion in which you would get involved in, you know, higher level street fighting, yeah. but they've taken off a lot of these uh, rocket sites. Uh, have been taken down by a lot better precision uh, bombing, but there are collateral damage whenever you have these. Yeah, and this you... is, you know, it's almost being used to Israel's disadvantage because then the storyline becomes exactly what you've said. Yeah. And the right to defend, Israel's right to defend itself gets caught up in, the, looks uh, like, in the issue. It just looks like exactly what you talked about just about a half an hour ago. It looks like a school was hit on the Gaza Strip. So. How, why did this whole thing start? Is this because the Israelis took out that Hamas leader? Well, this is, I believe this much is, more it, it is, it's a continuation. You ask me, this ties back to Iran, mm -hmm. and I believe that this is more intensity in the Gaza area to create uh, activity in the aftermath of the you know, instability in Egypt. And this is a big challenge on Egypt right now. Morsi has a lot on his hands to come in and demonstrate that he's capable of reasserting the control over the Gaza Strip. What should the president do? I mean, he's in Cambodia right now. I mean, well, the president is, is going to need to push for uh, a real effort to try to have a, a settlement, a de-escalation of this. There's talks going on in Cairo right now uh, and a hope that they can be successful. Hey, what happened with this Petraeus thing? Uh, General Petraeus, you know, testified behind closed doors. He says that he had the right intelligence, that this was a terrorist attack in Benghazi that was planned, a planned terrorist attack, and he gave that information to the administration then how did Susan Rice come out on five different talk shows and not just say that? Well, that's the real question five days later. I mean, Petraeus was saying that within 24 hours uh, he had reported it, and he believed himself uh, very early on. In fact, it is based on a lot of the estimates on what was happening before you could predict mm -hmm. the, by the nature of it that this was a, a terrorist attack. We're getting into semantics now. I agree. And, and, and they're playing games on, you know, on the side of, well, it, it, they did include the idea that there might have been uh, you know, a terrorist associated with it. Uh, but she was unambiguous, talking about it five days later being a specific reference to the motivation was the, uh, you know, was the, the, was the video. And those were those demonstrations were taking place all around the region. No question. Well, there about weren't. It. I mean, fr factually, what they determined was there were no uh, demonstrations outside of the mm. embassy or or not the consulate. The consulate uh, on the day of September 11th. That this was a. Uh, so what are we saying here? What are we trying to extrapolate? It's so the frustrating. That the that the president didn't want the word terrorism used before the election. That is one of the suggestions if you want to be cynical about it uh, a defense to that and I'm trying to play both sides is that there's ambiguity whenever you are involved in getting real information from what is a chaotic scene but the argument that's being made is okay 24 hours maybe 36 hours but five days later it's still a very deliberate attempt to create a storyline that is completely different from what the facts are uh, on on the uh, in the field and that there should have been at least equal representation that it could very likely have been an al-Qaeda inspired attack. 
<sighs> it's so frustrating. So now what? I mean, you know, Mike Jarek asked the Mike Jarek, I'm talking about you, you're not here, asked earlier this morning, you know, she uh, goes in front of confirmation hearings, you know, to be Secretary of State. Well, you these know. things are all sort of the ancillary issues. It gets back to right from the beginning, what decisions were made at, at the time with regard to why there wasn't adequate security. I mean, this is a long-term well, investigation. I've never been able to, be to figure out, Congressman, who... Isn't it obvious that a, a consulate in Libya security should be really beefed up? Unbelievably so. Well, this we we knew Ansar al Sharia was was yes. organizing just miles away from where this was. There was plenty of intelligence. Why is there an army inside that consulate? Well, almost. people want to know what's going on. Why yeah. was he there on September 11th uh, in Benghazi rather than back in the safer area that he could have right. been in? Um, Who's in charge of, of guarding a consulate? Was well, it's it's the State Department. State Department. And they had hired guards that were there that were uh, not enough. Uh, no, you should have had uh, a, you know, a, a very specific force. I know when we call for help, when they <clears throat> screamed out for help. That's an issue. The troops came in from Croatia. They were that far away. One of the things that I am concerned about is those two military on the top were using a sight to laser to the point where they thought that mortar fire was coming. You do not expose your position unless mm. you think something is yeah. coming. Mm. And that's a question that I have is why they would have done it unless they had the expectation that they were going to get support and if there wasn't support coming why not where was it wow good to see you. all right yeah you. Sure. are you a, a, a eagles fan sure i am absolutely you distraught um, yeah i'm distraught i'm listening to howard's assessment and it's a uh, you know we all had such high expectations for this team we even said the word super bowl at the beginning of the year yeah. well how about this one? Oh, i want your take on this another setback for the sixers center andrew bynum 